What's up, everybody? How y'all doing today? Yeah, I'm back. I ain't been on Instagram Live in a while. I took a little break, you know, work on a few things. You know, I'm going to start the new season off with a legendary rapper. He goes by the name of Curtis Blow. Everybody know about Curtis Blow, legendary rapper, you know, Hall of Fame rapper. He about to come on at 4 p.m. We're going to talk about it, you know, story and what he's been doing, you know, these last few years. So I want y'all to stay tuned, stay around. We're going to talk to Curtis Blow. It should be a winner. But meanwhile, I want y'all to go to my YouTube channel, Vibing with Don Vito, to catch this interview. Once it's edited, it'll be on the Vibing with Don Vito YouTube channel. Check it out. It should be on there tomorrow. Also, I want you to go to my other YouTube channel, which is titled Women in Prison Crime Stories. All these women I interview who are presently incarcerated, who got life sentences for murder and all kind of crazy stuff. And um, they just want to tell their side of the story. So I want y'all to come on and y'all want to check that out. Also, y'all know what it is to be 139. The number one Harlem radio slash podcast show uptown. You know, Harlem, we represent, interviewed over 450 top guests and also a lot of people who's on the rise in the community. You know, but people basically all over the world have been on our show. You know, I know about the B139. So like I said right now, we're going to talk a little while. We got my man Curtis Blow coming on, legendary rapper. You know, he's going to come on and start the season off. Curtis Blow and um, she'll be a good one, very good one. You know, um, spoke to him the other day and he's got a lot going on. Yeah, he's still around. He's doing some amazing things, very, very amazing things. But other than that, you know, I want y'all to stay safe out there. You know, these brothers out here doing a lot of wild stuff. A lot of people getting killed for nothing. You know, these young boys riding around on dirt bikes, wearing masks. Wearing fitteds, hoodies, and all that. And they're just shooting up everything. So I want y'all to be careful out there in the community. You know, we got Boss Baby Entertainment. Peace. What's good? How you? What up, bro? How you? Yeah, we got Curtis Blow coming on, bro. So hang around. And, and, and you know, should be a good one. About to interview Curtis Blow. Should be a good one. We'll start the season off, you know, fall season. And we're going to keep it pushing. We're going to keep it going. But y'all stay safe out there, all right? We got Curtis Blow about to pull up. I just see him wave at me. You know, um, so once he hit that request button, we're going to get right into the interview. Also, you know, with this COVID thing, this vaccination stuff going on, you know, y'all be careful, you know. There's a lot of funny business going on with these shots, these booster shots and all that. And I'm not impressed. So, you know, y'all be careful with that too. All of a sudden, now they're trying to press us to take shots in order to Go to work, you know, go to school, go to concert, all that type of stuff. It's crazy. You know, I, I ain't feeling that. I ain't feeling that. I'm really not. The world is crazy right now between the gun violence and the COVID. You got to stay low to the ground. Everybody, you know, who been through something know what that means. You know how to do this. And uh, any of y'all want to work out, y'all see me, health is wealth, fitness. You know, we doing our thing. You know, y'all want to get your body right. You know, I train little kids, boxing, all that. I train older people, keep them alive, keep them going. And I also train women pre and postnatal certified, you know, women before pregnancy, after pregnancy, things like that. So if y'all want to get your body right, you want to get in shape. Curtis Blow is in the building. Let's do it. Curtis Blow, what's up, bro? Yo, yo, can you yo, hear me? Yo. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. Can you, can you hear me? I hear you loud and clear, brother. All right, great, great, great. 
Yeah, so yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm in the building. Yeah, you're in the building, man. Everybody wait for you to come in the building, too, man. You, you look right. good, brother. Thank you, thank you. Let me get some light on this subject. Okay. Yeah, there we go. I see all the plaques on the wall. Oh, man. Thank well God. Deserved. To God be the glory. To God be all the glory. <laughs> <laughs> I like that hat, too. Let me see that hat, man. Okay. Hip-hop. I am hip-hop. You are hip-hop, man. A little bit. Now you all hip hop, brother. You helped <laughs> pave the way. You helped pave the way. So, Curtis, um, tell them, um, you got a, a lot of young viewers on here right now. Tell them where you're from, man. Well, I was uh, born and raised in Harlem. Harlem, USA. Well, actually, I, I, was, I was born in a hospital called uh, Sidehand. It was uh, over on Convent Avenue. Mm. In about 129th Street. Okay. And um, man, uh, uh, I when I was first born, they took me from the hospital to Queens. Mm. So I lived with my aunt and uncle for about a year. Mm -hmm. And then my mom came and got me when she got a, an apartment over in uh, Harlem. And Convent Avenue. Convent Avenue. 40th Street. Convent Avenue. Yeah, that's yes, a nice sir. little area over there, man. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good that, you know, that whole Convent Avenue from 140th to 145th Street right. is incredible. Yeah, I went to that church on, on Convent on 145th Street. Me too. Yes, I did. Convent Avenue back to this church. Exactly. I went to yes, the Sunday sir. school and everything. <laughs> yeah, they had a nice Sunday school, right? Uh-huh. It sure did. <laughs> yeah, I remember very well. So, Curtis, so so coming up in Harlem, um, we're going to run through this real quick. What was your first interest as a kid? Well, my first interest was um, actually reading. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> to be honest with you, when I was in the third grade, I took this special test, uh -huh. reading test, and I scored really high. I, I had a, a 12th grade reading level when wow. I was in the third grade. Wow. And, and, and comprehension was a 10th grade level. Mm -hmm. And so they put me in special classes called the IGC, right. which means Intellectually Gifted Children over at PS192, okay. 138th Street in Amsterdam and Broadway. And so fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, I was in IGC classes learning crazy things, man. I'm like trigonometry in the fifth grade and algebra and calculus. But the main thing was, you know, I used to go to the library all the time. Mm -hmm. And I used to spend two and three hours at the library and reading, just reading books. Yeah, I, 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 I read so many books and learned about so many things, so much information I uh, stored in my brain when I was a young, young, young kid. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was my first love, academics. I went on to go to... Uh, extra progress classes in junior high then the high school of music and arts in high school and uh, also CCNY. I went to college at 17 years old. Wow. <laughs> Got to go to college and met Russell Simmons and uh, the whole Jedi Knights and Rush Productions and the college force and college disco. Mm. <laughs> uh, but after that, you know, while I was uh, I was uh, academia, uh, I, I love dancing. I was right. a b boy, a break dancer. Mm -hmm. My crew was called the Hill Boys up there <laughs> on Amsterdam Avenue and 140th and 141st Street. Mm. And you know, it's a funny thing about that block because 
you know, we used to practice on the roofs. Mm. The roofs were our playground. If, um, if I don't know if you know, but that whole block from 140th to 141st Street, the buildings are all connected. Are connected, yeah, connected, yeah, right? yeah. Uh -huh. So if you go to one roof, you can run down the block and be on 141st Street. Mm -hmm. And and it was incredible. So we had a lot of time up there. This is where we practiced. This is where we got our routines together and we rehearsed up there on the roof. Mm. And also, I remember back in the days, we played in, in, in the backyards too. When I um, had the mattress, we used to do flips and all that type of stuff like that. Remember that? Yes, of course. You know, the block parties were very, very special as a big part of the culture something that you know you, you you i'll never forget because it was so fun man yeah and in, in the summertime you know how we used to turn on the fire hydrants and yes. blast the water and with the you drive in your car and, uh -huh. yeah got your little can right and, and this, <laughs> a car comes by you black they better roll up their window <laughs> you know what i mean you get blasted but yeah. a lot of cars used to love it because they could get a free car wash. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. And so we did that so many years growing up. And, of course, when we had the park jams and the music and the block, block parties were very, very special uh -huh. and important. And, and, and the opportunity for DJs and MCs to get popular during that time. So uh, my hat goes off for all those DJs back in the days who used to have rope and, and hook up their sound systems to the light pole. Yeah. And uh, just play music for the whole neighborhood. And you can hear this music from miles around. Yo, there's somebody having block part, you can hear the music. Or you can smell the food. Because yeah, people right. People are bringing out their bar barbecue grills, and they're grilling food, and you smell that food for miles around, man. Somebody's got it going on and, today. And everybody, and you, everybody showing love, right? And it's all good. It's all good. Even the police would come around and 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 eat up food with us. You know, everything was all right on their on their you know their tour. Exactly. So. Um, you know, it was all love. That's what the block parties represented. Exactly. That, that early, early birth of hip hop, and it was all love. People all love. just wanted to come out, have a good time, listen to some good music, mm -hmm. and party, and have a good time, and eat some good food. Exactly. Because at that time, it was like you saying, it was a neighborhood thing. We never knew it was going to turn into what it turned into today. Mm -hmm. It was all about fun. Right, right. That's the, the whole amazing thing about hip hop was that it started on the streets of New York City mm -hmm. and how it spread across the nation and eventually around the whole world. Yes. We live in a hip hop generation. From the birth. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, the greatest thing about hip hop today is you go outside of the country and you go to countries like Germany, they rap in German now. You go to Italy, they rap in Italian and Spanish mm -hmm. over in Spain and French over in France and Japanese over in Japan. And these, these the countries outside of America have embraced hip hop and now they made it their own culture. Yes. So now, you know, back in the 80s, I used to get people, the Germans and Europeans coming. Oh, I learned how to speak English by listening to your song, The Breaks, right? <laughs> and, and, and now you go to Germany, there's still American hip hop scene there. Uh -huh. but there's a huge German hip hop scene. So it's huge now. It's spread all over the world. All over the world. So when did you, what made you want to get into the hip hop 
um, entertainment work? Well, um, I, I, I guess it, it was my um, vision to be a DJ when I got to college. I uh, wanted to follow Reggie Wells. Mm. <laughs> Reggie Wells. Over at CCNY, he was the program director uh -huh. of the college radio station. And so I wanted to break into the music industry by being on the radio and getting contacts with all the record companies and then make a record like my hero, my mentor, Mr. Gary Bird. Mm. I don't know if you ever heard of him, but he was on WWRL Super yes. 16. This AM is Gary station. Bird with the GBE. I'm going to <laughs> motivate your mind, your body, and your soul. <laughs> so he had this high voice that was incredible to me. And what he did was he made these obscure records like, uh, so Mr. President, Mr. President, who were you with last night? And the song, come on. Me and Mrs. Mrs. Jones, Mrs. Jones. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so yes. he did that for about three or four minutes with this special obscure, um, um, I call it hip hop, early hip hop record. But um, I wanted to make a song like that. And of course, my voice, uh, I was motivated and inspired by my other mentor on WWRL. It was Mr. Hank Spann. Mm. I don't know if you ever heard of him, but he had a real deep voice. He was like, WWRL, Super 16. I'm the server. <laughs> I'm about as funky as a crippled crab with the other crutch. And you know that's too much, too much, too much. Too much. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And he was incredible. Uh, he would come on drive time. This was before Frankie Crocker, right? Uh -huh. And this was AM radio. Mm. In the 60s and the 70s, Jerry Bledsoe, you know, he has Hank Spann uh, and, and, and Gary Bird. And it was incredible. AM radio, WWRL. And I mm. used to listen all the time. My mom. She used to go to the record stores all the time and buy the top 10 records. And I think I learned how to read by reading the charts of the records. And, and I yeah. used to hear them on the radio. So, you know, I became my mom's DJ and wow. a family DJ and house uh -huh. parties and holidays and birthday parties and such. And I would walk around the room of the whole family. Everybody's in the house. I would walk, walk around with my pen and my pad, mm -hmm. writing down the request from mm -hmm. everybody, right? Then I go back to the, the, to the record set and stack the records up and play the records for everybody. And mm -hmm. I did that at eight, mm -hmm. you know, seven, eight years old. So Early. the music was in my blood. It was birth in me by my family, my mom. She was an avid lover of music and she was actually very popular around the neighborhood as a dancer as well. She used to go out to the Cotton Club and mm -hmm. the Renaissance Ballroom and the Savoy Manor and all of those clubs back in the days in the 60s and 50s. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, People in the neighborhood used to come to our house. Oh, yeah, Minnie, Minnie. Her name is Minnie. Uh -huh. uh, we call her Skinny Minnie. But anyway, she, they would say, Minnie, Minnie, dance for us. We heard you can dance. Come on, dance for us. And she said, she was so humble. Oh, no, no, I can't dance. But my sons can dance. Check them mm -hmm. out. And she'd throw us out there, me and my brother. Uh -huh. And that's where I started dancing, you know from uh -huh. an early, early age, trying to keep up with my big brother, who was also uh, uh, one of those original B-boys. Mm -hmm. So what made you start to want to be an MC? Well, from, you were from, from DJ, we got to dancing. Now, how, what made you pick up the mic? Right, uh, all of that. You know, this, this, this culture, 
you know, has elements. And, and I, was, I was affected, inspired, let's say, uh, uh, traumatized even by every element. And so, all right, I don't even know. I, I, I guess first I was a dancer, a, a b-boy. And then I became a DJ because we as b-boys, we became record collectors or researchers. We would go to your mom's house, mm -hmm. your uncle's house, and listen up all day long to the music, the record collection, and then find that one song that had a break, a funky, funky break, so mm -hmm. we could go down to the floor and do our dance moves, right? right. And then we take that record back to the yo DJ, play this, right? Uh -huh. And that's how we went back in the days. The D, the B boys were the the the, rec, the researchers. And so, I, 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 in doing my research, I, I found out all these songs that we really love. Man, I can play these songs. I know right. the songs, you know. And so we gave a block party in 1972 in City College, in the square, in the big square, we had a thousand people out there, all listening to young 13-year-old Curtis Walker play the music. Wow. And I borrow all the records from everybody around the block. You know, I moved, <laughs> this one had a sound system, that one uh, had a sound system, and I go and snack their records up, and I had all the records that I needed, because mm -hmm. I bought them borrowed them from everybody right and so it was a great event um but that's how i started djing and then i went on of course when i got older and went to high school in 1974 that's when i was telling you uh you know i started uh being this impersonationist impressionist mm -hmm. uh, and i used to you know mimic hank span all the time and everybody oh man you sound just like him, you know, so that was my voice. WWRL. So I got the opportunity one time um, at this one club where I started at 1974. It was uh, a club called Wham. It was on 152nd Street and Amsterdam Avenue. Wow. Actually, it was the old 52nd Precinct right there on 152nd and they shut it down move down the block uh and so this abandoned building they turned it into a community center and and uh, uh and it had three floors mm -hmm. we used to party up in there on on tuesday nights wednesday nights it was incredible wham was a hot spot and so <laughs> one night i i asked the guy um the owner of of the uh community center could i get on the mic he said sure and i did my uh hank span impression <laughs> i never forget it i was rapping on top of barry white uh, and uh i did this voice you know welcome welcome to wham everyone you're listening to the sounds of DJ Kurt Walker, the show enough talker. <laughs> <laughs> and come on, everybody, let's have a good time tonight. If you feel good, say, oh, yeah. <laughs> everybody said, oh, yeah. You know, I had the crowd response and everything. And so I did well that night. And the uh, Donald, uh, what's his last name? Donald Mayweather is his name, I think. Who uh, was the community organ organizer, and mm -hmm. um, he was the one who gave me my shot at an mm -hmm. MC, being an MC. And he told me, "Yeah, you're good, man. Come back next week." So I went back, and you know, and eventually I opened up my own club there on 140th Street in Amsterdam called the Carolina West, mm -hmm. and I had my neighborhood partying the kazoo man it was great man man being a dj and just making people feel good when they listen to certain music mm -hmm. you know it's it's like it's a very special special thing 
Yeah. So, yeah. So that building you were talking about is on the corner of 152nd Street, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Big still, green building. Still there, right there on the corner. It's still there. Yes, sir. Yep, right across from the battlegrounds, from the park. Right across from the battlegrounds. And that's where I also started a lot of my MC days out in the battlegrounds with uh, Fever Disco and uh, TJ, the DJ, and the People's Choice. That was my first crew. Man, mm -hmm. shout out to them guys. MC Doc, Burns J, TJ, the DJ. What an incredible DJ he was. He still is. He's over in Jersey now. So oh, yeah, TJ the DJ. I remember him, too. Big shout out, TJ. TJ the here. DJ. Yes, um, sir. Yeah, the battleground had... You guys were over there doing your thing. And they also had great basketball tournaments over there at that time, too. Of course. Yes, yes. Battlegrounds was a, a hot spot for, you know, basketball tournaments and stuff like that. And uh, uh, But... but when we brought music out in the park, that's when everybody started coming around and the battlegrounds got its reputation right. from playing music. That was the battlegrounds, right? Yeah. There. You know, I remember meeting JDL from the Cold Crush Brothers. He came down to and hung out with us and became our friend, you know, uh uh from the Bronx Bronx. He and and you know, he it was just incredible to hit, see him on the mic, you know, doing his thing. And then we got up there. We did our thing. It was wonderful, man. Mm -hmm. Those old school days when we rapped, you know, it was all about the love and just expressing yourself on how great you are. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we were all teenagers coming up, reaching puberty for the first time. So that's what we do you know we we gain confidence by braggadocious rap yeah <laughs> <laughs> so when did you get your first record deal so i went on uh you know playing in and around the harlem area then i hooked up with russell simmons in college and i went out to queens and hung out there for a couple of years. We opened up a club called the Night Fever Disco. Two hundred and first Street in Hollis Ave. Mm. My big shout out goes out to the Hollis crew. I love you all. I miss you guys. I'm one of the OG members of the Hollis crew. And uh, man, rest in peace, Jam Master J. Big shout out to Davey DMX. And oh, my girl. Paulie me and Mims, she just texted me with a video. So that's Puppet. She's out there in Queen, Queens with mm -hmm. her sister, Nettie. That was our crew out there, man. Davey DMS, Solo Sounds. Uh, it, it was something else being out in Queens. Mm -hmm. And so, so uh, after I opened up that club, Night Feeder Disco, we got really popular, Russell and I as promoters. We were trying to do this thing like Jerry Roebuck and Jerry's productions, you know, and Harold Maynard and Reggie Wells. We followed their format and we started giving parties at the Diplomat in Manhattan. Mm. And we had 2,000 kids outside that couldn't get in. And it was <laughs> cut. And it, wow, we rose to the top, Russell and I. Uh, uh, of course, he promoted me as Queen's number one DJ. And, oh. um, and so, uh, uh, actually, these writers from Billboard magazine came down to do an interview on us. And they included me in the interview, a young college student. In 1978, I think the article came out in Billboard about this thing called hip hop. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so these same writers, Russell convinced them to come down to the diplomat and check me out one night. And because they were thinking about making a record, but they wanted to use Eddie Chiba. No. 
and he was the, one of the hottest DJs, uh, MCs during that time. So uh, um, he came down to check him out. So, but Flash and I were on stage together. And Flash, you know, Flash tore it up with the mm. speed going from one turntable to another. And I'm out there pumping up the crowd like, you know, everybody say ho, you know, <laughs> doing my thing. And we rocked the house like that night. And so uh, Robert Ford, rest in peace, my producer of my first five albums, came over to me and Russell introduced him to me. And he said, yeah, we'll, we'll make a record with you, no problem. So we got together and made the first Christmas rap song for hip hop in 1979. And I was the first artist signed to a major label with that song. So, wow. wow. Praise God and to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. All the time. All the time. So, how many albums did you do um, in your career? Uh, so far, I don't know. I, I lost count. <laughs> See, that's enough to say. <laughs> I've been working. I think it's about 15 or 16. Because I, I, I did um, 10 secular albums, Curtis Blow albums. And then I did five gospel albums as mm. well. So you can look at me up on YouTube or Google, iTunes, Curtis Blow and the Trinity. That's right. my group. Yes. Curtis Blow and the Trinity. And also, I have uh, uh, another three albums I put out called The Hip Hop Church. Mm -hmm. I have Hip Hop Church Volume 1, 2, and 3. I'm right. getting ready to do Volume 4. So, so let's talk about that. So people want to know, what has Curtis Blow been doing the last few years? Let's talk about that. Well, I'm involved. Um, I'm involved with an organization called the United Coalition for Humanity. And it's a group of individuals who want to just help people. Basically, it's good against evil. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we love life. We love people. We love humanity. We love uh, 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 the fact that people want to live and they want to live their lives more abundantly yes. and not just survive, but right. thrive. And this is what we believe in. We want to just help people. We want to uh, uh, construct and build and enhance and support the love of humanity. So where any threat against humanity is a threat against us. And so, we have nine committees that are uh, uh, fighting the injustices like the criminal justice reform and education, entertainment, sports, uh, sustainability, women's rights, uh, 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 reparations, social justice, and uh, uh, voter rights. So all these all these committees we have. solutions to the problems. We also have 32 ambassadors, meaning uh, a, a representative in 32 states. So we're pretty national, pretty much national. We're, we're looking for 20 more uh, uh, ambassadors. So if you want to join our organization, please do so. It's free. Uh, we need you. It's go to the website UCF h.org that's the united coalition for humanity ucfh.org and join it's free all right so so when you join do you have like certain type of um obligations or things you gotta bring uh to the table for us like how do you what, what happens when a person joins well it depends on that person they are not obligated to do anything that they don't want. But if they have 
an interest in one of the committees. Like we need experts and people with uh, experience and credibility and intelligence to be on different committees. Like we have doctors and lawyers and ex-judges and we have federal prosecutors and all kinds of incredible uh, professors. And I mean, man, it's amazing the people who have come forth. So uh, whatever it is that you do, your talent, your gift, I'm sure it can be an asset to us to help humanity. Mm. So um, if you look at the website, you'll see all of the committees and uh, just pick one, you know, criminal justice, uh, policing reform, uh, sustainability, reparations, uh, uh, education. We, we need more educators out there, you know, uh, um, sports, you know, entertainment. You know, we are working in a union right now, actually. What yeah. about health and fitness? Oh, I didn't mention our health and wellness committee. I'm so sorry. Oh, man. Yeah, and that's one of our big, biggest committees. And we're talking to, uh, I've got to shout him out, Mr. Robert Abrams. No, Robert Adams. And uh, he's out of Delaware, and he is our ambassador for Delaware. And he is uh, uh, CEO of Telehealth 24-7. Big shout out to them. That's a... Uh, a national insurance program uh, geared to help people who need all kinds of help, physical, right. mental, uh, uh, education, and on. But uh, we're knee deep in the middle of negotiating with SAG and AFTRA for health benefits for our hip hoppers. Mm. And that's why we are going to start the hip hop union that's gonna give benefits and uh, uh, pensions and collective bargaining agreements and, and support to our hip hop artists and R&B artists as well. Mm, that's big. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very big. So when is that um, supposed to um, take place? Well, we, had a, um, we have a meeting today. We meet every week. Uh, with SAG and AFTRA, and we're finalizing our contracts right now. Mm -hmm. So I think hopefully our, our target date uh, is the end of September. By September 29th, we pray that we can finish it all up mm -hmm. and then make a special announcement. So is this work with your... Um the coalition, is it um, volunteer work or is it paid? No, it's volunteer work right now, but we are looking for our finances right now between myself and the bishop, uh, the ED executive director, Bishop Cathay Jones. Uh, we are doing most of the funding ourselves right now. And we have a brand new Bishop, uh, who is our finance director, and I want to shout him out as well, uh, uh, Mr. Adrian uh, oh, Norman. Hmm. And so um, he is our financial director, and he is a going to put us in the on the right track with our finances before the year is out. No, no, no. Yeah, I would like to be a volunteer. Yes. It's something I, mean, I definitely would like to get involved in because I, I do a lot of stuff in the community as well, but I teach a lot of kids and, and, I, and a lot of seniors. I train them and stuff like that with health and, health and fitness and stuff like that. And this is my company right here, Health is, health is Wealth. 
Fitness Incorporated, that the shirt I have on right here. Oh, wow. Okay. That's why I asked you, you know, um, it's a volunteer work, because I would like to volunteer. Okay, no problem. Yes, yes, yes. We uh, are looking for people like you to come on board who have experience, credibility, yes. intelligence, like I, like I say, you know, and you fit that mold to the utmost. So yes. thank you, thank you. And we need you. And 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 somebody trying to call you, Kurt. Yeah, but somebody called it. The sound goes off. So um how long is the um it's been in existence what you've been doing? Uh, we've been at this for uh, a year now. Mm -hmm. Yes, we just filed our first 990 form, which is a uh, you know nonprofit, um, nonprofit uh, 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 little paper that you would have to you have to submit to the IRS every okay. year. So we just did it an application uh nine nine eight form. We just finished that and we're very happy we made the deadlines and everything. So we're rolling and yeah. it's a legitimate, bona fide, strong uh five oh one C three nonprofit organization. Okay. Somebody just put the, do you still go um do you go out and perform every so often? Uh yes, I just did uh, you know since the heart transplant, you know, I I haven't worked since uh 2020 ever since COVID hit mm -hmm. March of 2020, but I just did my last my first show over in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Man, man, I love you guys over there. I uh, love you. And uh, it was like 50,000 people out there. Right? It's a, a, a summer fest. Right. And I was on stage for an hour. Wow. <laughs> and, man, it was amazing being back out there, you know, after uh, uh, the big, all the operations and everything. And uh -huh. man, I didn't get tired once either. That was such an amazing feeling. Yeah, man, I could have did another hour. You know what I mean? <laughs> man, thank oh, God. Thank brother. God. Yes, yes. I'm so happy to be able to get out there again. So I do have a tour coming up in November and December called the Hip Hop Nutcracker. Mm. And we're going, last year we shut down because of COVID and we just streamed it live. You know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so ye this year, and then I had I had health problems, and uh, I got the heart transplant, and so mm -hmm. I'm ready to go back out on. Man, we have 50 shows around the country coming up this November, December, and it's going to be great. All the best theaters around the country, and it's going to be great. It's a a, a a must see for everyone, like. Your family, bring your kids, bring your wife, bring your mom. I've seen four generations out there, mm. you know? Yeah. Grandchildren, children, and their children all come out at the same time. So it's something great for everyone in, in the family. It's the holiday season. We need to get back to those good times of having joy and happiness in our lives because that's the the holiday spirit yes you know christmas is our best time of the year and yes, it uh, is. and it's all about the birth of christ bottom line right always, uh, uh, always. Uh, and so it's a very special time of year and i want everybody to come out and just you know forget about your troubles Forget about your cares. Let's just have a good time. We are back, and and God is good. God is good all the time, all the time. Yes. 
So um, what's what's next for Curtis Blow? Outside of the the, uh, the 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 tour you're about to do and stuff like that, what's next? Well, I'm I'm just sitting here, um, thanking God every day. Um, I have a covenant actually with God, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and it's you know I've been through a whole lot. I have four heart operations. Wow! Within the last four years since. 2017 I went into cardiac arrest mm -hmm. in 2017 and I died for five minutes mm. right the ambulance drivers came by hit me with the bop gum you know the, the defibrillator and I came back and I was in the ambulance I remember oh my god I feel I, I, I'm gonna die oh my god this is it <laughs> mm. <laughs> So when I got to the hospital, my wife was there and she prayed for me. That's my prayer warrior. Yeah. Shout out to her. We've been married for 38 years. 38. And uh, she's prayed for me about four or five times and God has used her to heal me. And that's crazy to yeah. know that you have a wife with such power. Power, yeah. God has blessed her with the gift of healing. Mm. And so... Um, Praise she the Lord. prayed for me and I, I didn't need an operation that time but I found out I went to cardiac, or cardiac arrest because I had low potassium and so it went on I had an operation a heart operation on my mitro uh, a regurgitating mitro heart valve mm. and it's, it's, it's the valve that actually pumps it pumps, it beats, and it flaps. It goes up, boop, 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 boop. Yeah. You know, and, uh -huh. and that's the mitral valve. And so I had to do a repair on that. That was one operation. Then I went out to China and caught a blood clot in my eight order mm. and almost died. People don't come back from that, you know. I flew back from China 14 hours, and that was a miracle. Got to UCA, they, UCLA. They did the operation. It was successful. Then I ruptured the other side of the aorta in the operation. Mm. So they had to do another emergency surgery. And they didn't know if I was going to make that one because the heart was so weak. Then I'm going on. You know, I got through that. Then they put me on, on the donor list because my heart was getting weaker and weaker, weaker. And uh, so I got the heart transplant. So long story short, um, I, I established a covenant with God, which is an agreement about the third operation. After the A order, I was like, God, you must really love me. Mm. You must really want to keep me here on this earth, on this planet. Yeah. And I thank you. I thank you. And yes, I'll sir. make you this promise for the yes, rest sir. of my life, I will preach the gospel. And for the rest of my life, I will go to the highest mountain, mm. climb to the highest mountain and shout out with the loudest voice, God is real. Yes. Yes, he and is. And I'll tell him what what you did for me god i'll tell them exactly my testimony and i'll let them know he god did it for me and god can do it for you too amen amen because god is able so yes. that's what i'm gonna be wow. doing for the rest of my life all right yeah. and you know what so am i um, that's what i do um, every day i wake up i praise the lord you know I thank him for everything. Right. And any chance I get to talk about God, and I'm loving the fact that you're talking to God to me because this is the way I like to talk. So this is great right here. I'm loving this right now, you know, for real. To God and I really like, like, like you said, he has you here for a reason. That's why you're not going, you know? Right, yeah. right. Yeah. For some reason, I'm like, you must want me to preach the gospel because you know that's what I do, and I've been doing it. No. Now, now I've been a minister for like 
since 2007. Okay. And so I love me some God. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> but now, check it out. Now, what do you think how I feel about God now? Yeah. I'm telling you, four surgeries? Man, listen, this is some miraculous stuff. Yes. This is this is God saying to the world, I do this. This is what I do. <laughs> yes, yes. God is still in the miracle business. Yes, yes. And you look great, brother. Thank you. Thank you. I, 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 feel, I, was, you I know, feel great, man. I couldn't even tell that you've been through all that. You look healthy. You look strong. You look good, man. Thank you. Thank you. You don't look weak. You don't look like you've been struggling. None of that. Yeah, I, I, I still have these little speech impediments, I call them. You know, it's it's called a, a, a an apraxia. Right. From, uh, I, I had one, uh, a stroke during uh, one of the operations, and it affected my speech. But I'm about 85, 90% there. And yes. When I get out in there on stage and I rap, you, you can't tell. <laughs> right, right, so right. Praise God for that one. There you go. He's on. <laughs> he got the angels over you when you're on stage, and make sure you give a hell of a show because he knows that you have a heavy following. And long as you talk about him, a lot of people are going to hear it. Amen. He wants you to spread that word. Amen. That's right. That's right. And and that's what i am so grateful i'm so overjoyed and thankful to everyone involved in all them surgeries and all of my yes. they were all fiascos angels. and my all testimonies and and i want to thank you know everyone out there who has prayed for me mm -hmm. i haven't forgotten you i have i i, I listen I remember D Nice. You know he has a, a a couple of million followers, so he gave me a shout out and said, "Pray for Curtis Blow." Mm -hmm. And he had a hundred thousand people saying prayers on his Instagram. Wow! And so, you know, people have been praying all over the world when they found out about me and. All the old deals I've been going through, people have been praying. My family have been praying. My wife, of course, uh, my kids, everybody, you know, all my fans, you know, and I don't have any more fans. You guys have graduated. You are now my friends. There you go. No more fans, only right. friends. Only friends. And so I thank you all for praying for me, man. And, 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 and I tell you, I'm a walking, living, breathing testimony that prayer works. Prayer makes it happen. Amen. Amen. So let's keep praying. Let's keep praying for our country. Let's keep praying for our world. Let's keep praying for all the people who are infected or... or uh, affected by this COVID-19 and the new Delta, man, my God, my God, my compassion, my love, my, my, my heart goes out to all of you who have lost someone or you know some, everybody I know knows someone who has been affected by the COVID-19. And so we need to keep praying, keep praying for our people and oh, God is able to bring us out. God Amen. is going to heal our land. Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's name it and claim it right now. Name it and claim it. Yes, Jesus. sir. Amen. Amen. Hey, Kurt, so I want to thank you for your time. You know, that, that was a powerful testimony. You know, I, a lot of people are tuning in. I just see hearts going up, hearts. I see prayers going up. People love you. I love you. You know, and, um, I'm going to call you after the show because I want to be a part of um, what you got going on with the health um, section of it. Okay. And um, I'll be in touch. And uh, love you, man. And, and, and stay doing what you're doing because 
you're a testimony out here. We need we need people like you out here to spread the word, man. And I'm gonna do Thank my you. best to do my part also. Thank you. And shout out to everybody out there in hip hop. Hip hop, I love you. I will never, never forget you. You mean the world to me. I spent 60 years, uh, well, let's say 50 years of my life loving hip hop. It is part of my life. And I thank you for all the support out there. And, and don't forget the United Coalition for Humanity, everyone. You can join. Please join us. Help us. Support us. UCFH.org. Or humanitycoalition.org. <laughs> there you go. We want y'all to support my brother Curtis Blow organization. It's a great organization to be a part of. And um, he just gave you the information if you want to be a part of it. All right. Shout Curtis out to Blow. the Pop Union and Sagging After. And all my people out there, the Hip Hop Nutcracker, I'll see you guys real soon. Love you. Big shout out to my boy, B-Boy Morris <laughs> and Jarvis and all the cast and crew. Man, I love you guys. There's about 20 of us going out on the road. And we are our family. I love you, Eva, Marie, uh, also Jennifer Weber, uh, uh, David Rodriguez. Man, the whole, the whole Josh, Josh Altman, all of you guys. I love you guys. Hip Hop Nutcracker, we're coming. We're coming, we're coming, we're coming. <laughs> hey, Kirk, we want, I want to thank you, bro. We're going to tune off right now. You have a great day out there, and I'm going, I'm going to call you. I got to talk to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Don. You're welcome. All right, My peace. My pleasure, brother. Peace. <laughs> Curtis Blow, everyone.